Just wait, please wait. So I think it is live now. You may start vision. Okay. Come on, that's nice. Okay. <laughs> Respected professors, learned colleagues, mm -hmm. my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, we all uh, are aware that Professor Berling is no more with us. What cannot be expressed, how sudden we are to hear the loss of Professor Robbins Berling. Life is a cycle which starts with a birth and which ends with a death. On this occasion of condolence for uh, condolence meeting organized by the Tivlani, uh, I'm here with a sorrow, sorrowful heart to be a part in the sad moments of the family of Professor Burlings and the near ones. Many of us are good friends to Professor Burling who had a chance to meet him in many a times. And many of us are closely associated with him also. And at the same time, many of us had a chance to meet him once or twice in our lifetime. And again, at the same time, many of us are heard of his name only and his work. So this introductory space on this condolence. It's a very simple, I think I'm not a worthy person to give an introductory space on such an occasion, but to pay my uh, tribute and homage to the Professor Berling, uh, I feel I'm privileged. I feel I'm privileged to have this opportunity to say a few lines as an opening remark, who was Professor Berling? So let me share and Small slide on it. Let's see. Ah. <laughs> yes. So, Professor Hiding him. <laughs> Berling was an emeritus professor of anthropology and linguistics to the University of Michigan, who is a giant in the fields of anthropological linguistics, language evolution, and language pedagogy and a pioneer in the ethnography and linguistics of Tibeto-Burman speaking groups in the Northeast Indian region. He was born on 18th April 2000, 1926 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA. And he has served at different universities across the world. Among them, he has served at Harvard, University of Pennsylvania, University of Rangoon, and University of Michigan, University of Gothenburg, Sweden, and in, in, in India also in Northeast Hill University, he has served from November 1996 to May 1997. So all this, in, in, in all these universities, he has served at different teaching positions, such as teaching fellow, as an instructor, as an assistant professor, as an assistant curator, and as a visiting lecturer, and as an associate professor and professor from 1953 to 1995 and emeritus professor from 1995 till 2021. So I'm not going to talk about, or I'm not going to read out what is his contribution in the field of linguistics as well as in the field of anthropology. So, uh, yes, among the his significant and outstanding work outstanding work, Garo Grammar, which was published in 1961, is the first grammar of any Tibeto-Burman language to be written in a modern linguistics framework. And apart from the, his outstanding work in Boro and Garo language, he has also worked in other languages of under other end languages like Fom, Wancho, Burmese, Lolo, Lusai, Angami, Lahu, Maru, and other languages of the world. So there are so many other works which I am not bringing to my introductory speech. We have other speakers also who were closely associated with Professor Berling and they will give more light on it. So this was the, a small brief introduction for our friends who knows only by the names and by the works of Professor Berling. So thank you very much. Now, I would like to request Professor 
कि हिस डिरेंस सिंहा टू काइंडली चेयर द रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ दिस टू डेज कंडोलेंस मीटिंग एंड टू ब्रिंग फॉरवर्ड द मीटिंग ओवर टू यू सर या थैंक यू बिजेन uh in fact is a condolence meeting but uh, normally we used to welcome the members by welcome our you know friends so i just uh, you know officially i welcome our all tibleni members and friends and professor ropes you know relatives in this condolence meeting and is really shock and we lost a very finest linguist from this planet professor evans boring he has extensively worked on bodo garo languages of northeast india and extended his research work on many other tibet german languages of northeast india and also the the languages of this universe in this condolence meeting so we have many of his friends and his followers who will give condolence peace Sir, so give me some space sir sorry for the uh, interruption with due yep. regards uh, i just want to inform uh, our friends that we have steve berling who is the son of okay. professor uh, robins berling with us now okay yes. i'm really i'm really happy to know that okay he is with us and this okay i have mentioned that okay we have many of his followers friends and you know his what to say well wager because he was associating with us for in many occasions in a form of seminars workshops symposiums and we learn a lot from him and we never forget his contribution his significant contribution in tibetan linguistics so i just uh, i'm not wasting my time i just i i call upon Dr. Paulton Hawkins to say few words on the lives and works of Professor Robbins Brown. Yeah, uh, Dr. Paulton Hawkins. Okay, okay, okay. So then the, I think Sir Paulton Hawkins has some nervous issue. Then Mr. Tamsu, Dr. Tamsu will uh, give condolence messages in the meeting. Please. thanks yeah uh, thank you uh, professor diren uh, uh yeah so dr pawan was supposed to give this uh, yeah. message but uh, he has connectivity issues uh he's in a village right now so he's not able to join us uh so this uh, evening i just like to take this uh, opportunity to say a few words uh on behalf of the Tibeto Burman Linguistics Association of uh, Northeast India uh so yeah today uh, this evening we are gathered to pay our tribute uh, offer our respect and condolences to uh, a man who was a pioneer in the study of uh, Tibeto Burman languages uh, of Northeast India uh who has uh, dedicated more than 60 years of his life uh to uh, scholarship in the field of uh, linguistics uh, as well as uh, anthropology uh, one who was uh, a very close uh, friend to the people of uh, northeast india and it is indeed a, a very sad moment uh, when we were informed uh yesterday that uh, professor berling had passed away in michigan on sunday is january the 3rd uh, at the age of uh, 94 uh for those of us uh, who are working in the field of linguistics 
and anthropology. I think we don't need any introduction to this uh, man's uh, scholarship, his life. In fact, uh, Dr. Bijen has already, I think, uh, shown some of uh, you know, the, the work's scholarly contribution. In fact, you'll be surprised uh, if you look at his, uh, the, the amount of work that he has done, if you look at the uh, more or less, I think, complete bibliography that you uh, have uh, in the fest trip that was organized in uh, 2016 at, at Niels. Uh, so in this book, uh, I'm just taking out certain points. Uh, it is said that uh, Professor Berling was awarded the Ford Foundation uh, fellowship in 1954. Uh, to conduct field work in uh, North East, Northeast India, uh, particularly among the Garos, uh, over a period of two years. And I think uh, from this uh, time onwards, 1954 onwards, uh, he has had a very close association uh, with the people over here. Uh, he, they said he returned back to the States in 1956. And then in 1959, he uh, spent a year at the University of Yangon uh, in Burma on a Fulbright uh, program. Now, from 1964 to 1995, he was at the University of Michigan, where he uh, retired as emeritus. And uh, if you look at the what post Moray and Delancey in their introduction as editors in that first trip, they say that uh, it's probably an thing. <laughs> It, it's probably fair to say that some part of him never really left the Tibeto Burman area and kept him uh, returning and with increasing frequency uh, over the decades. Uh, so, personally, for me as a student of linguistics, uh, we've had to read many of his uh, papers. And uh, so, you can imagine my surprise when I personally met him at one of the uh, Niels conferences. And this was um, in Guwahati. So uh, someone who was like a you know, godlike figure in, in linguistics, uh, meeting him personally, and then you see that someone who is so approachable, uh, very down to earth uh, person. Uh, in fact, it was in these uh, uh, Niels conferences, Northeast Indian Linguistic Society conferences, which was held uh, every year but, and at some point of time, it became uh, once in two years. Uh, in fact, uh, this platform uh, was, was uh, it was a platform where many people actually, I think, met him. Many students, many scholars uh, from Northeast India met him and became uh, acquainted uh, with him. And so uh, he has been a, of great help uh, to many scholars uh, and students uh, from Northeast India. Uh, his passing is uh, surely a very great loss for German linguistics in Northeast India. And, uh, and though he's no longer with us, uh, we will definitely keep his memory alive and celebrate his life uh, by continuing our work on these languages and communities uh, that he so dearly uh, lo loved. And uh, I, on behalf of the members of the uh, of the Tibeto Burman Linguistics Association of Northeast India, uh, we offer our prayers, our condolences to Professor Berling's family members, his friends, and his uh, colleagues. Uh, we pray that God will grant them the comfort and solace as they mourn the passing of their loved one. And. Uh, in the, at this moment, I'd just like to, as uh, uh, a mark of uh, respect to uh, the departed soul, I'd like to ask all members to please stand wherever you are uh, for a minute silence. You can mute your audio and video, and uh, we will spend one minute uh, marking, uh, showing respect to Professor, late Professor Berling. Shall we all spend one minute of silence?
Thank you, everyone. Uh, now back to uh, Professor Diran. Yeah, thank you, Tamsu. Uh, I just uh, invite Dr. Priyam Sharma. Dr. Priyam Sharma uh, has associated with Professor Rao mm -hmm. in many occasions. Uh, I just uh, invite Dr. Priyam Sharma to say a few words on the life and works of Professor Robin Barney. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sharma, please. Uh, thank you, Direl. Uh, uh, hopefully, I'm audible. Uh, I first came across uh, the works of Robbins Burling in 2003 uh, when I started my MPhil research in Hyderabad. And I read uh, his Proto Boro at that time, probably, and I was really attracted by the simplicity and the clarity of arguments that he was presenting at the, uh, in this work. And uh, I strongly believe that if uh, now that I, uh, that uh, Dhire, um, or Bijen mentions the Garo uh, grammar and then Protoboro, probably in the post-independent India, uh, these works probably set the course of tibeto burman linguistics as a distinctive field, as a distinct field uh, in, uh, in India. Otherwise, uh, the tibeto burman linguistics would have been very different if these early works were not there from uh, uh, Robbins Burning. Uh, my correspondence with Rob actually started 44 years after the publication of Protoboro. Uh, when I emailed him that time, his email was the only available email between Joseph, jo Father Joe's and him. And I asked him for a copy of the tone correspondences in Borogaro languages. And within about four or five weeks, I got a package in Hyderabad, India, from all the way from Michigan, not only uh, like not tone uh, correspondences with Photo Borogaro, but also like, you know, other uh, two publications of his. Actually, I have them still, I have them with me. Uh, uh, then uh, later in 2003, uh, I went to my first conference in my life, which was in Mysore, 2003, December. And I presented my first paper on Boro tones and Rob was there. He gave such comments and appreciation for my work. He basically blessed me with his, uh, 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 with his encouragement. And at exactly at that juncture, I had to make a very serious career choice, whether I want to be a TV news presenter or a linguist. And Rob's blessing as encouragement and his kind words really helped me to choose my career path as a linguist. Uh, when I went back, went to the US, uh, I was in more or less in uh, good contact with Rob. Sometimes I called. And then in 2005, there was one occasion where I went to uh, meet Rob at his house, as you can see on screen right now. And um, as you can see, the house behind it, it was built by Rob by himself. And I think I'm told that Steve also uh, had a contribution in building that house. And that is one thing uh, that Rob was very proud of sharing with people. Otherwise reclusive uh, Rob was very proud of sharing. And he went, uh, took me to the basement and show me all the plumbing. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, at the end of my PhD, I sent my dissertation to Rob uh, with the hope of getting some comments. And within a few weeks, he wrote a critique of my dissertation and sent me uh, several comments. And uh, many of them were justifiedly very, uh, uh, like, you know, harsh comments com compared considering Rob's uh, personality. But he was right. He was right, and uh, I'm sorry that uh, because of my schedule at that time, I could not take up replying to Rob, but Rob never forgot, forget it. Rob would always remember it. There was one email that Rob sent about a month later, and he asked me if his comments actually hurt me. And later in 2010, Sheila might remember it in Tejpur, uh, mm -hmm. when uh, Rob met me, he pulled me aside and told me, tell me Priyanko, are you really hurt by my comments? And I was not. I was not because they were all justified. So the reason I'm telling you these uh, instances of uh, um, Rob's care, kindness, humility, encouragement to his younger peers is because this is, these are not isolated incidents. 
this is what Rod was all about. He was kind, compassionate to everybody he met. We owe a lot to Rod. Most of the work that we are doing today in the Northeastern area are basically, uh, basically uh, the, the seeds, sprouts of the seeds that Rob has sown in the last 60 years. He has been a part of our lives and I hope uh, he, has, he has been a part of our works too. And I hope we all carry a little bit of Rob uh, in the future life and in our future work. At this moment, on behalf of all of us, we stand together with Rob's family, partner and friends. And uh, I hope uh, Rob rests in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bijan. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Priyanko, uh, for your, you know, a nice, you know, condolence uh, message in the occasion of, you know, this today's, you know, condolence meeting. And I just uh, invite Dr. Monali to say few words on the works and lives of Professor Rob, because uh, Dr. Monali also, she has also associated with Professor Rob in many occasions. Uh, Dr. Monali, please. Thank you, um, Professor Singha, for um, asking me to say something. Actually, I do not know where to start because I am still in a state of shock. And um, Professor Singha informed me yesterday that um, Ber Berlin is no more. So I could not at first believe. Um, but ultimately, I have come into terms with the situation that we are all in. So I have tried to resolve myself as much as I could. Um, the first time I met uh, Rob was in 2006, when I was, I think, in my um, second or third semester. And that was when I think um, one of the first NAILS conferences was held in Guwahati University. And a lot of uh, foreign scholars came and attended the, the, the conference. And that is when I met him for the first time. And um, after that, um, we had interactions and I was a student. And whatever I have learned in my uh, class on linguistics was very little compared to what he has taught me throughout his life as long as I could, you know, in, in all of the contexts that I had with him uh, physically and by mail. Um, in, around 2007 or eight, uh, we worked together for um, Dimasa Tones. And I was, it was a very awkward situation where, you know, um, Jyoti Prakash Tamuli sir um, asked me to be an informant and I was very scared. Uh, scared that I don't know how fluent I am as a native speaker of my language, Dimasa. So I suggested that um, the other uh, Dimasa informants who can help him. And I was confused with tones at the time. And I'm sure Priyankuda will be able to understand and relate with my situation at that point of time when I was a student, how confusing it was for me. Um, I was scared that I'll give the wrong data. So I called a few uh, youths to be informants for him, but he was not convinced. He still wanted me to be his informant. And uh, finally I had to uh, sit with him. And when he showed me what he collected with uh, two, of the, uh, two of the boys that I called, and he showed me that these are the two names I have collected. This is what I have found. That was when I realized that this is low tone, this is high tone, this is how, this is where this should be marked and that. And then I realized, oh yes, I know there is tone in Dimasa. Oh yes, I know these words have this tone and that tone. So he raised my confidence in, you know, understanding tone and I could help after, uh, after that, uh, you know, day I could help him with um, sitting with him and um, uh, recording tones and verifying them. And then he boosted my confidence after that. And I uh, did my PhD in Nehu Shilong. And during that time, I, you know, even if I had my own supervisor, I will still keep in touch with him. And I used to send him all of my chapters, all the 10 chapters I had, I sent him each 
each of it. And he took his time in spite of his ailing um, age. He took time and then he sent comments. Each and every sentence, there was a comment. Each and every line he would say, you know, do this and correct these and you do that. And I was very happy that, you know, this is going to help me uh, write better and uh, read better for my research. So I, I owe him a lot uh, during my, uh, for my thesis that I have been able to submit and also because I could mold my research as much as I could with his uh, special effort and help in review. Uh, not only that, you know, he he even um, once he you know sent by mail, I think uh, three books from the U.S. Uh, one was his book on uh, Rengsangri, and the other was his Garu Grammar, and another one was an encyclopedia, and um, on something on the planet, and I still keep it uh, for display in my library. It was a wonderful uh, gift that I had from him, and. Um, he would never consider us as students, but more of a friend. And just like uh, Priyanku Dai said, same thing he used to say to me, if I don't reply, uh, if he, he used to re uh, mail again that, did I hurt you? Did I offend you? Did I do something? So and so. So ultimately I had to, you know, reply to him and say that no, nothing as such and everything is fine. And then um, he, is, he was a very sweet man, very simple hearted, and he was such an ideal person. And in, in spite of being so old, he still visited Northeast. And the last time he came was in 2016 um, in Tejpur University when uh, this um, language and culture of Northeast India and beyond was released. And it was a surprise gift for him uh, as a pre-birthday uh, pre, uh, uh, gift. And that was when he came last to India, I suppose. And after that, I got a chance uh, last year from Nails Conference again in CIT Kokrajar to give a message um, which was recorded by uh, Linda. So um, I think um, whatever I am in my life, I think um, Rob also has a special place to hold. And um, we do miss his presence a lot, but whatever I will be more tomorrow, I think I will always uh, show my gratitude to him because he, he, he has inspired me in many ways. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manali, for your wonderful, wonderful condolence messages to him. And I, I, I think so, our professor, Rajesh Sajdeva, sir, he is with us or not, Manali? Uh, Hello. We are not Reserve. able to. We are not able to see him, sir, by this time, sir. Uh, with oh. your kind permission, uh, we have received a condolence message from uh, Tura. If you permit me, let me share the yes, message. Yes, sure. Please. Just give me a second, sir. Yeah, this is an, a condolence message from uh, a Czech Literature Society, West Garo Hills, Tura Meghalaya. Uh, sir, should I read it out or? It's... Yes, yes, please. Okay. Uh, to the family members of Let Robbins Berling, Emeritus Professor of Anthropology and Linguistics at the University of Michigan and Arbor United States of America. Condolence meeting uh, message the members of our Czech Literature Society, Tura, express their deep sorrow on hearing the damage of Lett Robbins Berling, Emeritus Professor of Anthropology and Linguistics at the University of Michigan, USA, on 6 January 2021. The Czech Garo people are greatly indebted to him for his contributions to the study of their society and their language. His book, A Garo Grammar, 1961, was his first book on Garo language, written on the principles of linguistics. 
to name a few. Some of his books on the Garo people and their language are Rengsangri, Family and Kinship in a Garo Village, 1963, The Strong Woman of Madhupur, 1997, The Language of Madhupur Mandi Garo, three volumes, 2004, the Lexical and Volume 3, Glossary, number 4, Garo Spelling and Garo Phonology and Linguistics of Tibeto Burman Area, Volume 6, 1981. Noun Compounding in Garo in Linguistics of Tibeto Burman Area, 1992. The Tibeto Burman Languages of Northeast India in Sino Tibetan Languages by Thurgood Graham Lapola, Randy, 2003. Garo as a Minimal Tone Language in the Linguistics of Tibeto Burman Area, Volume 15, 1992. We recall that in 1950s, he came to Garo Hills to do his research on Garos, leading to PhD degree. He chose to work on the Garos as he was fascinated by the Garo custom of cross Kajin marriage. He based his work at Rengsangri, a village that practiced indigenous belief system and traditional customs. He chose to stay in the village, learn their ways and fell in love with the language. The Arctic people remember him as a good friend. They cherish their memory of meeting him during his field work with Garo Hills, Meghalaya, India. He will be forever in our hearts and may his soul rest in peace. At the time of his demise, the members of the Arctic Literature Society to send their condolence and prayers to the Biri family members. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in, we live in, in East destroyed. We have a building from God and eternal house in heaven, not built by hands. Number two, Corinthians. Uh, this is from the Secretary Arctic Literature Society, Christel Cornelius D. Marak, and the Arctic Literature Society to our president, Caroline R. Marak. Thank you. We are thankful to Arctic Literary Society for the condolence masses. And next, uh, if uh, Professor Subha is with us, so I'm inviting Professor Subha to say a few words on the life and the workshop, Professor Rof. Thank you um, for giving me this opportunity to say a few words about Rob, who um, I know for, um, for the past uh, two decades or so. And uh, before I say anything about uh, him, uh, by way of remembering him, uh, let me uh, convey my heart, heart, heartfelt condolences to Sila Proctor, who I can see on the screen, and also to uh, Steve Burling, who, who's there. Uh, I guess uh, that organizers are recording this uh, program and would be able to provide us with a link so that Nono can also watch it tomorrow morning. Uh, we, we all will miss uh, him, uh, not just the linguists, but also anthropologists in this region know him very well. Uh, his book, uh, called the Ring Sangri being a very distinctive book as far as the anthropology of this region is concerned. And uh, um, I, I, had a, I had the privilege of uh, uh, reviewing that book and showing him uh, the, the review of that book. And he, he didn't agree with me on many points. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we had a long argument uh, uh, actually a series of uh, email exchanges before, before we settle on something that has been published uh, subsequently. Uh, I, I also wrote, a, um, wrote an article uh, in his memory, basically uh, in the book that Mark, uh, Mark Post uh, and uh, Delance, Professor Delancey Mm -hmm. uh, and one one other person uh, edited uh, uh, as a first volume uh, in the name of uh, Professor Robbins Berling. Uh, but besides these uh, these uh, um, few um, articles that I published, uh, basically centering around his work, 
Uh, I knew him personally for, for very long. And one of the things that I remember uh, very clearly about him is, uh, is going to the British Museum with him to fight for the right of a family, which was, uh, uh, which was denied by none other than a, a very well-known institution called the British Museum. Who doesn't know about the British Museum? Actually, whoever visits London visits, British, visits the British Museum as well. And uh, des despite having signed an agreement with, the, with Dr. Very Alvin's family and having committed to give a certain amount of fees for, for um, digitizing uh, the negatives uh, that the family holds, giving a copy, a DVD copy, copies of uh, those, those uh, photographs. Uh, and, uh, and and a small uh, kind of a license fee for the family. It was just just about uh, I think just about two thousand uh, uh, sterling pounds. Uh, I don't think that amount was such a big amount for the family. Sorry, for the British Museum, but they they simply backed out without uh, fulfilling any of their commitments. And when um, we uh, we. It, with the, with Professor Robbins Burling as our leader, and Ju, Professor Jyoti Tamulli and Mark Post as, and myself as the three supporters of, of uh, Professor Robbins Burling, we created a huge kind of uh, pressure on the British Museum in different ways, uh, but that didn't really work. And finally, uh, Robbins Burling and I uh, went to the British Museum. And I still remember uh, Rob shivering with anger, seething with uh, with anger, and he could hardly speak because he was he was literally uh, uh, seething with anger, and uh, he could hardly uh, kind of uh, come out with uh, with with a kind of organized language uh, in front of the the lady in charge of the British Museum. And I think uh, he didn't mince words uh, as far as as far as uh, expressing his anger uh, is concerned. I was worried that he might he might be be kind of uh, rude to her, but I think she the the lady uh, wasn't responsible for, for that. There were some other people responsible, but I think uh, she had to face the brunt of uh, Rob's anger. But it worked finally. And the family got the justice. Family got the DVD copies of the negatives, uh, which were digitized by the British Museum uh, staff. Family also got that two thousand uh, sterling pounds, finally, uh, which was already committed uh, in the in the agreement. So now this here is a man who who fought for his uh, principles, who fought for humanity, who he fought against this kind of. Uh, mm, uh, this kind of high-endedness of uh, institutions like the British Museum. And, uh, and we all have very high respects for him. When I informed uh, um, Asuk Alvin, the, the youngest son of Dr. Vary Alvin, uh, yesterday about, uh, about Rob's uh, sad demise, uh, he was really sad. And uh, I, I, I tried to reach out to as many of his friends as possible. Uh, but I couldn't reach out to persons who I really wanted to reach out because uh, Rob always talked about talked about them. One is my own colleague in Nehu, but I just couldn't reach out. His name is Professor Rengsi Ruata. He's a professor of history at Nehu. Mm -hmm. And uh, the book that, uh, that uh, Rob has sent to me, one of the theoretically most exciting books on Northeast India, or sorry, for the Southeast Asia called The Art of Not Being Governed by Jim Scott. Uh, this uh, Rengsi Ruata uh, hijacked it from me and has never returned that book to, to me. But he was such a, such a good friend, such a, a loving friend of uh, Rob that I, I ignored this, uh, this uh, little uh, kind of development. The other person uh, Rob was never tired of uh, talking about was Father Joe's. I I uh, I don't I just couldn't contact him because of, I also wanted to inform him uh, about about uh, Rob's sad demise. 
I, I did inform some people uh, who have responded. <clears throat> and some of, the, uh, some of the messages I have forwarded to Stila, I hope she received received some of them. I also forward them, forward them to Steve, uh, and he might have also received uh, some of those uh, condolence messages. Uh, this is um, this is something uh, in, in if you look at it from one point of view this is this is something that that's bound to happen to all of us one day we are all going to leave this world but uh, if we can leave the world with with some kind of uh, uh, close friends and uh, um, people who would remember remember us uh, with fondness with with gratitude, with uh, love, I think it's nothing like nothing like that. I think the life of uh, anyone's uh, would, anyone would be worth living if we get if we have if we have earned the friendship of at least some people, love of some people, gratitude gratitude of some people. It's very difficult to win the gratitude gratitude of some people. People are not really grateful, uh, and people are usually very selfish. And if they, have, if they are grateful beyond these hours of uh, condolence uh, uh, meet, I think that's really worth the life uh, he, he, he lived. And uh, I'm, I'm sure um, uh, I'm sure he was, and, and he did he did write to me a couple of times that my 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 children and grandchildren are taking extremely good care of me. Uh, and I, I think he was he was very lucky to have such wonderful uh, uh, children and grandchildren who took such good care of him that he was really uh, happy about uh, I, I don't know where, whether I, I'll have the, I'll have the same luck or not but I think he was he was lucky to have uh, to have uh, such a loving wife uh, in Silla Proctor and uh, Steve and Nono, and he, he also talked about Nono quite quite frequently uh, about about uh, about her. So uh, we all we know that uh, we'll miss him, but uh, I think the, one of the best ways of uh, remembering him is to continue uh, uh, talking. Uh, con is continue uh, carrying forward some of so some, some of the research themes that he had. He had worked on, uh, and also uh, to to carry uh, forward some of the values he he upheld, the uprightness. And uh, uh, I, I don't think he uh, he was very diplomatic about about language, although he was he, he always was apologetic afterwards. But uh, first he said it, and then he uh, kind of. He felt a little apologetic, maybe two days later or three days later. Uh, that's what he was he was like. And uh, I, I, as I also remember one once requesting him, literally requesting him to deliver a keynote uh, in one of the seminars I was organizing on North East India. Uh, it was something like anthropology and uh, uh, beyond or something something like that, so that I could include uh, ecology, uh, linguistics, um, and other allied disciplines as well. But he said that, no, I have decided to go to the, that was in 1999. Uh, he was going back to the village again. 1997, I think he got the permission for the, after 40 years or so to go back to the village. So now, and I, I, I wasn't around perhaps in 1997, 1999, uh, he had planned to go to the village and I couldn't, I, could, I couldn't stop him from going to the village. I said, nothing, Tankat, I'm going to the village. I've decided to go, go there. You are, seminars like yours will come and go, but the, the village is my priority. So I'm going, wish you all the best. And then it disappeared. So, mm, I mean, there, there's so many, so many such uh, very, very um, interesting and uh, sometimes, uh, some names a little bitter, but most of the time, very sweet memories of uh, him. And uh, well, those of us uh, who, who knew him well, uh, who interacted with him, 
had uh, had um, food or some drinks together. Uh, whenever we met, we'll remember him as long as uh, we can. So thank you, organizers. Thank you, Tiblane, for giving me this opportunity. I think uh, I, I think Raja, Professor Raja Sudeva wanted. He had so many memories about uh, Rob that I asked him to uh, write, a, write a couple of paragraphs on him and send it over. But uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe something more urgent uh, caught up uh, with his uh, schedule. Otherwise, uh, I think he remembers how Rob donated not just books, but also money for building the, the, the very incipient uh, linguistics department of Nehu. And uh, uh, and how he made a force to teach in linguistics department. But let me tell you, he not only taught in linguistics department, but also taught in anthropology and history departments. So he, he was actually teaching in three different departments of Nehu at some point of time. I don't remember exact, the exact years, but maybe 1999 or, or 1997 after he returned from the field after went to the after coming back from the village so thank you paul and uh, and Sheila, be strong okay and and uh, um, we'll see you soon let this pandemic be over and we'll come and see you thank very you soon. Okay. i have tried to contact ruata and joe's um, I do have their emails, but I haven't heard anything back yet. That was only yesterday, so or okay. the day before. The other person I wanted to contact is Milton. I don't know if he's still alive. In, no, in... he's not alive anymore. Milton no. Sangma is not an, alive. No, I feared that might be the case. Thank yes. you. But, but thank Father Jaws, Father Jaws, I, I haven't I, heard I anything back. Him. But I, he doesn't always have a signal. We have to wait till he goes to where he can get a signal. Sometimes, so we may hear yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I have been in correspondence with him, so I'm sure we will hear. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. But thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, to receive that. Yeah. Thank you, Professor yeah. Suba, for your See, condolence making and experience with Professor Rob. Uh. If anybody is there to share something about the life and works or, you know, experience with uh, Professor Rob from think, the General I, Tiburonite I think Eric, members. Eric is, yeah. Yeah. Eric is around, Eric, Mar Eric Marker, okay. so maybe you could okay. invite him to speak. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I can say something, yeah. if you can all hear me. Thank Please. you so much for organizing this uh, meeting, which is a wonderful event. Um, let me start by offering uh, my condolences to uh, everybody to who uh, Robin Sperling was dear, and particularly to Sheila and Steve. Um, I actually uh, met uh, Robbins first in 1997, and uh, he was a great inspiration for me to actually start uh, working, uh, doing my PhD research in, in Garo Hills in the years that followed. And um, yeah, I mean, I was just struck by his, I mean, what I could probably best call his humanism, his ability to connect to people and his uh, averse and, and, and how do you say that, his, his actually uh, not connecting to notions of hierarchy. I mean, he once told me that he had two ties, I think one black one and another one, and that was it. And he never liked to wear ties. He never liked to wear suits. He just wanted to be an ordinary person. And he had a great way of connecting to people uh, and he didn't care about uh, social status. And I think he was uh, in that sense also an inspiration um, I also uh, actually visited him. Uh, he, he decided to agree to be an um, external advisor to my, uh, to, my, to my PhD project at the time. And particularly, I think in the first uh, 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 five years or something like that of the, of the 2000s, he actually, we were actually very regular contact and 
like I heard what, what he did for some of the others uh, who he guided in terms of linguistics. He also uh, read a lot of my papers or my chapters. He always commented on them in those days. Uh, we didn't do that so much by email or I don't know how, I, I mean, we did use email, but I remember also real, like, let's say hard copies with his handwriting on it going, uh, re receiving those, uh, sometimes quite difficult to decipher. Um, uh, but that was actually really very wonderful that he was uh, willing to spend uh, so much time on that and that he was willing to share his thoughts, uh, give his inputs, um, and was really very considerate. I also remember visiting him in, uh, in, uh, in Ann Arbor once, uh, probably 2003, uh, where I stayed at that uh, beautifully self-made house, which I was really like I was okay how can you have an academic career and also build your own house I mean I don't know where you get the time to do that um, but it was really a very uh, impressive uh, place and we had a lot of time to talk and I also remember that uh, the next morning that he actually made uh, uh, cinnamon rolls for us so uh, he said there was a recipe from his mother uh, which he had actually taught him and uh, that uh, he said, I don't know a lot about, uh, you know, cooking and all that, but this one he could actually do. And they were very good cinnamon rolls and I can still remember their taste. So that was actually a really wonderful experience. And uh, yeah, I, I, I cherish the, um, the memories of, uh, of, of the conversations we had, of the, the occasions at which we met. Uh, in the years afterwards, uh, every now and then we happened to meet uh, in Tura uh, because he, he often, uh, he was there in winter and sometimes I dropped in as well in those same times. So uh, last time we met was actually 2016. Um, and, and yeah, I, I, I just was very um, impressed by the way in which he continued to connect um, and uh, con continue to connect, continue to be interested. And in, the, in that sense, I think he, he was an exemplary uh, academic and also an exemplary uh, human. So uh, yeah, I'll surely, I'll, I'll, I'll miss him for, uh, for, for the, and I can see that uh, the kind of energy or, uh, you know, care which he, he actually gave to me, um, he gave to me, but he also gave that to many other people. And I think that that's really something that, uh, is extremely valuable and, and uh, really very beautiful. So thank you for giving me the occasion to say something. So thank you, Dr. Eric Macker, uh, for your condolence message. And now, Professor Rajesh Sasdeva, our teacher, come mentor, Professor Rajesh Sasdeva is with us. Uh, I just, uh, I took the opportunity to invite him to say a few words on the live and on the works and lives of Professor Rolf. Sir. Sir Sajdeva, sir. Rajesh, you have to unmute yourself. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please unmute. Yeah. Yeah. I would actually like to observe a few moments of silence in the treasured memory of Professor Berlin. Actually, it was exactly 25 years back that I first met him. It was of the winter time of 1996, and the Northeastern Hill University guest house was practically empty. There was just him and his wife, and I, and I was there, and I had come to rejoin my university because earlier we were in Nagaland for many years. And now we were good. Uh, we had come into Shillong. So that winter, we spent in the guest house together, and I found him attracted towards all the moths in the guest house. And he was, there, there were huge moths, much, uh, which, which he had never seen. And he used to always pick them up in his hand and was talking about it. And he was almost talking to those uh, moths and, and insects. And he would be descri describing the winds and everything. And I found him so much interested in natural things. And cultural things and everything. And that association with him, he was a very, very keen observer of what was around in, in nature. And uh, I had the good fortune of, of sharing that course of sociolinguistics that we were teaching in the summer. I was the university teacher. And after a month and a half of my teaching, 
I was to come back to Mysore when we had to pick up my family and there was going to be almost a month's gap. So Professor Berling was visiting Shillong and he was around. I asked him, would he want to uh, help out in this course and share that course of, uh, uh, for the students? He very happily accepted that idea. And for the next one month or so, my students enjoyed that, uh, that part of the course from Professor Berling. I think they were very much privileged that he was teaching social linguistics with them and they were doing all that. So when I returned, I found that he was there and we discussed about what he had taught and we and then he knew that I was working on the languages of Nagaland and you know he was very much totally always interested in it. So he wanted to see my notes of, of all those Naga languages. So I had made all these, you know, for all the 16, 17 languages, I had made lists, same sentence in 17 languages, you know, but a few hundred sentences I had of all those languages. So he looked at he should look at those samples and sit with me. Oh my God, that's crazy. They can't be related languages. <laughs> They're so much apart from one another. And you know, he used to say, these are crazy languages. They defy you. How can they be one family, one group, living so close to each other? And he used to be fascinated by the diversity across those languages and all that. And I loved the fact that he was just, you know, in the old school of Sapir and Boas and you know, sitting with the people, sitting down and, and tuning his ears to transcribing, very intently he would listen. And so I, I saw that and I remember his walking into the guest house and into the hostels of these students and he had found somebody he wanted to work with. And the meticulous nature of his wanting to sit, taking his notes, quickly checking the tones, doing an experiment to find out whether the tones were in contrast or not. And he would, he would have a methodology there ready to, to do that, you know. And I began to learn so much from him. You know, all my uh, feeling of being a teacher sort of vanished because I felt that he was the teacher. He was living every moment of his life for language. He was so much in tune with those and he had like, such a wide grasp of the things. He had, he'd always had some hypothesis going in his mind about, oh, I think the cognacs and this, these models, they, they may be related, they're the outer ones. He would make quick hypothesis and want to check up the things with us. And, and I found that extremely fascinating that he should be doing all that thing. I also remember him for a very as being a very generous man. You see, he when he was uh, leaving that year from Chelong for a while, he had a lot of money left with him of the research grants. So he wanted to donate the entire amount to the department. And you know, there was some 50, 60,000 rupees or maybe 70,000 rupees or something like that. And that was a lot of money for a new department. He said, no, I want to give it to the department. You are you know, just starting your things. Can I just give it to you? And he didn't want to, he didn't want us to feel that he was obliging us or anything. He was just giving it like a brother would give it to his family or something like that. He was not making any bones about it. He just wanted to give that uh, to me. He said, I want, to, I want the department to feel good and all that. And you know, we being in the university, we were not supposed to be accepting money from a person who's from a foreign origin or anything. But we got special permission from the university and we opened a small fund and we opened a bank account to honor his presence and we bought some of the books that were required for the department immediately and all including notes and Xerox materials and everything and you know, all kinds of things so that our students feel that you know though it's in his nascent stage the department here is somebody who values you and he wants you to feel good in the department so we immediately used that funding and all that and we, to, to put that and I think that fund somehow was so, we never ran out of that fund in some sense. Whenever we needed for things, that fund would come up with those small expenses. So I remember him as a very generous man, an extremely good teacher, and a man with extremely varied interest. He came to my house and gave me you know, some books. The first time he gave me a book on the selfish gene, because he was interested in biology equally. And genetics, he would he could think of language right from syntactic structures of Chomsky to the evolutionary perspective to the idea of it being biological property and trying to decode those things as genetically there. So he had multiple theories of, of language simultaneously running in his mind and he was always wanting to know, understand what language was all about. So he would say things about, about genetics and he would talk about animal behavior. He would suddenly talk about that. But I loved his simplicity. He was totally at home 
with the people, the tribes of, of Northeast India. He felt that was his home. He was just in a feeling, okay, everybody thinks that. He just could relate with them. He was downright simple, man. He, he, could, he loved their simple food. He liked their ecology. He liked the feeling of being there. Everything. I mean, I don't remember his ever talking anything negative about the, the places. He never saw it. And most of all, he would be very, his, his work, when his work would get processed, he wanted to make sure that he does not put it a very high price tag to it. He said, this knowledge I have based, I've, I've learned about this language from, you know, my own uh, people. They are the ones who, who know the language. I have only put it in, in a model. I have only put cracked it, you know, in my way. But they know the language. I want to give back to them. And he wanted, you know, he wanted his publications, his materials to go back into the society. He wanted to go back his, his thinking. He thought he owes it to the people from whom he's been interacting and been with. So he always had a deep sense of gratitude in his work. He always felt indebted and he wanted to give back to that. And of course, you know, I've, when I left Shillong and I joined the Mysore, the institute here, there was this book of his on comparative uh, phonology of Baro and uh, all those language, border languages. So we wanted to publish it. And being in the government department, there was some sort of a delay from our end in publishing. So he was very upset with that. He wanted to ask us, why were we delaying it so much and all that? So I must, in fact, apologize even at that time. But anyway, the book did come out. And he was happy that the book had come out because he wanted it to go to the public, to the ordinary people. And he wanted to reach the people. And his urgency was there. Even his reprimand, there was welfare in his heart. He really wanted to think well for the people there and the communities there. So I think he has you know, made a place for himself in many a heart. And I think his, his deep commitment, his total, you know, his, his, his own ways of doing things, his creative self, I have so many fond memories of, of those decisions of those few years. And I think... I think he's contributed immensely. He's a total legend. And uh, everyone who's come in uh, touch with him must have been touched in more than one corner of his heart. I remember him very fondly. I just want to pay my homage at this time. I will have, whenever I have a prayer in my heart, I'll think of Professor Berling and somebody who's contributed immensely. I think the entire set of linguists in this uh, country in the Northeast must pay. Uh, they, they must acknowledge that they, they have a lot to, 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 to Professor Berling, who loved being there, who worked there, and who was very much of an insider. He didn't think he was a foreigner there. He thought he's right there. He belonged to the people of that place. So I just place on record my deep appreciation for a, a fantastic human being, a most loved human being, and a very, very intelligent and sharp-minded there. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to speak. Thank you, sir, for sharing your experience with Professor Rauf. Uh, just, I'd like to invite Steve Barling to say a few words in this occasion. I'd like to thank everybody for all of your wonderful stories and kind words. Um, my father really, really loved being in India. He loved the people. He loved, he, he loved studying the languages and traveling around and meeting the people. Um, I think he was one of the sadnesses in the later, later part of his life was that he could not go back again, that he had made his last visit there for the fest shrift in 2016, which he, I think, sort of downplayed the importance of, but really, really, really liked that it had happened. And he was honored and delighted and pleased by it. So thank you all for your kind words and for inviting me to join in today. And I'll look forward to being able to share the recording of this with my sisters. Thank you. You were born in India too, right? <laughs> No, I was not. My sister Nona was born in Gauhati. Okay, no, no, yes, no, no was born. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I was. I was one year old when we 
when we went to India. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, so my various, very earliest memories are of being in Torah. Um, although I'm not entirely sure whether they're real memories or memories from photographs. Uh, but he said and, about acquisition of his children. You know, he was interested in the language acquisition of his children. And he... <laughs> well, apparently, my the first language that I learned to speak was actually Garo. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've always sort of said that by the time I was 10, I had learned three languages and forgotten two of them. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank, you, thank you too for your lovely words. And it's been very nice to meet you all again. And thank you for doing this for him. He would have loved to have seen it himself. <laughs> thank you. As, as I've been I've been reading all of the the messages of condolence that have come my way, it it strikes me as how sad it is that the people that they're written about can't actually see them. Yes. Um, I'm, th I'm thinking of announcing my own death a couple of weeks early so that I can see them. <laughs> but God give me, give you a longer life than you expect. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Steve Barlin. Yeah, so now I just, I would like to invite Saila Proctor to say a few words in this occasion, please. Sorry, to invite who? Sorry, were you inviting me? Yeah, yeah. No, yes. somebody else. Ah, oh, right. We are, we are inviting you, ma'am. Oh, you are, sorry, I wasn't sure. I, I just, as Steve said, it was such an important part of Rob, Northeast India. And I was very lucky to share two visits with him and to meet many of you. And I treasure that too. And I'm very glad to be with you today and to hear all you've had to say. So thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, if if I mean, anybody is there, okay, to say few words on live and works of Berlin from our general Kibrinai members, please, anybody. Okay, uh, Professor Diren, can I come in quickly? Can you hear me? Yes, please, 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 please. Sir. Okay, please. I'm, uh, I'm so sorry that uh, I could not. Yes, Pautan. Hey. Attend the pro program, ask, and I mean, I well too, but I was trying to uh, listen to all the talks, especially Professor Rajesh Sajdeva. <laughs> so I came to know about uh, Professor Baling uh, through uh, Professor Rajesh Sajdeva. So a teacher, he was our teacher at uh, Nehu. And at that juncture, if I can recollect correctly, uh, there was a the time when uh, Professor Baling uh, made his visit to Nehu. Uh, perhaps he might have made uh, I think we're experiencing some net problem. Yeah, yeah. Earlier visit. And, but yeah. to the best of my understanding, Professor Baling came to our center where while we were doing our MA <laughs> linguistics, MA first year, second year. And my interest personally um, stem uh, from the works of uh, Professor Baling. So I love Professor Baling uh, because of his uh, simplistic uh, writing and also uh, to the point. So it really uh, to think of a notice. So because though we are born, uh, uh, though we are natives of Nordis and speak uh, the languages of um, Nordis India, uh, as an observer, so we are not very good in observing our languages and our culture. So Professor um, um, Baling uh, is very self in noticing the 
minutest, uh, what do you call, nuances of language and culture. So though, since we are part of this language and culture, uh, to us, uh, it is redundant. Sometimes we feel it is redundant, it's all normal thing, kind of thing. But he can see, he can dig some interesting thing which we see as a normal. So what is normal to us is not an ordinary, uh, normal situation for him. So it's such an understanding he has over language and culture of Northeast India. And later on, when I started digging about his uh, uh, literary works, uh, he has been writing on what he called people and tribes of the hills of Southeast Asia. He's in, into anthropology. He has a vast understanding of Northeast India, language, culture, society, politics, and so on and so forth. So something uh, which will emulate us for a very long, very long time to come. And we miss him. Uh, perhaps it was the last time that I sent him a, an email. So he wrote back saying that uh, he's not keeping um, very uh, very well. And but that was the last message that uh, I got from, from him. And the last uh, physical meeting I had with him was in Neil's conference at Guwahati. So that was the last time perhaps I met him. So yesterday, uh, Professor Rajesh Sachdeva called me up while I was in, in a rural village uh, to inform me that Professor Rob is no more. So I was so shocked, but at the same time, I really don't know what to, how to communicate back to him and kind of thing. So uh, I told uh, what they call our colleagues at Tiplane to arrange whatever is necessary because my network yesterday was very poor. And today I was suspecting that uh, I will have the same kind of poor network. Perhaps I, I, I hope you are, I am, I am audible to all of you. We miss Professor Balling so much, so much so that uh, there is no words to describe him. And we uh, personally uh, will be indebted to Professor Ballings and to his children and loved ones. Uh, please always uh, feel free. Nordis is your own home. Wherever you are, whenever you feel like coming to Nordis, please come back and visit us uh, wherever um, we are. Uh, we should be meeting um, um, in, the, in the years and months to come. So uh, words are not adequate for me to express my uh, appreciation and also the kind of um, love, affection we have on Professor Rob. But with these few words, uh, I would uh, conclude my um, short speech. And I, once again, um, uh, uh, wished the family member uh, 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 during this uh, great loss, personal loss to their love and their uh, uh, father. Uh, he is not only your father, he's a father, he's a father, he's an academic father to all of us, even in Nordi. So we share the same kind of uh, what you call loss that you have in, uh, in, in your heart. So we, we are also facing the same loss. Uh, but anyway, this is part of life, uh, as has been said by Professor, uh, what do you call, uh, from anthropology. All of us have to leave this world. The only question is uh, with what kind of, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, the legacy we leave behind. So Professor Balling has left us an, uh, an unsalmantable, unsalmantable legacy, uh, which I, I don't think many of us can uh, would be in a position to do. But his legacy will inspire us to become a better human being and, uh, for, and uh, live for the cause of humanity and then destruction. So with these few words, uh, I, I, I hand over my uh, this thing to uh, Professor Diren Singh. Thank you. All. Thank you, Dr. Pao Tang. Uh, if, anybody, if anybody else to share condolence messages, experience, or, you know, please, anybody else? Um, May I? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah uh, some Italian. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, please. Okay. Um, I'm very sorry uh, to learn about uh, the demise of Professor Berling. Um, I have met him as a student in my master's in, uh, you know, during my master's days in Guwahati University and in many of the news conferences. I have also referred to um, a lot of his work, especially on Borogaro classification and, uh, Rab uh, and Garo grammar, um, especially when I was working with Rabha because uh, they, it benefited me uh, a lot in my research. Um, I also was lucky enough to interact with him in uh, many of the conferences, Neil's conferences. The last time I met him was in Tejpur, uh, Neil's 2011. And uh, he was a great uh, 
linguist, but he was also a great, you know, a very simple and humble uh, person. Uh, he used to dislike when we used to call him sir. Uh, he said, call me Rob. I still remember uh, that about <laughs> him. And uh, he was sweet enough to, uh, you know, uh, talk to all of us, uh, the students, the scholars, and uh, he used to clarify our doubts. Uh, uh, I would always remember him as a great person, a great linguist, uh, and a fine human being. And uh, I hope uh, his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Samita. Uh, now, time is running short. So we, if, I'm inviting one, only one, one person from our Tiblina members to say few words, if anybody else, please. This will be the last. This will be the last person to say, please. So, Bizen. Dijan. Yes, sir. Yeah. If no one is there, so you can go for the board of thing. Okay. Uh, thank you for giving uh, this opportunity to propose board of thanks. Um, I would like to thank uh, Professor K. S. Singha for <clears throat> chairing the condolence meeting, and I would like to thank uh, individuals, uh, Dr. Temsu, Dr. Priyanku, Dr. Monali, Professor Suva. Uh, Professor Eric, Professor Rajesh Sasdeva, Professor Pok Thang, uh, Dr. Samita, and the uh, family members of uh, Professor Robin Berling and the other members who have joined today's condolence meeting. So I thank everyone for joining today's condolence meeting. And uh, we would like to convey our sincere message to the family of Professor Roth that at this point of uh, the, the kind of uh, sorrow that you are bearing, we are we are also feeling the same, and we are with the family of with the family of Professor Robs and God may uh, give the courage uh, uh, to uh, to bear this kind of sorrow with the family members. So thank you very much once again to all the members who have met their time to con convene to attend this condolence meeting. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Bizen. Uh, so we pray to Almighty, may the departed soul rest in peace. Uh, with these few words, today's condolence meeting is closed. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for attending this seminar. Uh, this uh, not uh, condolence, especially uh, our uh, teacher, uh, Professor Rajesh Deva, and also Professor. Uh, Suba from uh, anthropology. Uh, Professor Suba might not be knowing me, but uh, I know you, so I was uh, there, yeah. Mm -hmm. then, thank you, everyone. Then. Yeah. There's so much to celebrate about Professor Berling's life, actually. You know, it's almost, you feel, you know, I don't want to hear. Uh, it's, there's so much in his life that we all have to learn and treasure. So it's, on the one hand, it's a condolence, but there's so much that he's left and such a legacy. So I think... Yeah. We must you can look at it with awe and, and take so much from draw so, so many lessons about what how to be and what to be and how to remain in our academics. Fantastic. Yes, person. Fantastic person. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very true, very true, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye. See you soon. See you soon. Let us meet someday soon. Hey, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Is it the janitor? Uh, uh.